today, Bonnie Dietrich and Betty Lehan and I are sitting in the lovely library of the Senior Center, and we're going to be introducing Georgia Jones and Norma Shurhan. And we selected these two uh, because uh, for Women's History Month, we thought it would be interesting. They are so very active in, in different organizations within uh, Norfolk that we thought they'd be wonderful, uh, have wonderful stories to tell us. So we're going to start with asking the question, um, how long have you lived here, and how did you end up in Norfolk? You want well, to start, Norma? I moved, we moved in um, with our four children, August 15th, 1964. Oh my. And how did you happen to choose Norfolk? Well, it, I was born and brought up in Dedham. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the only place to live <laughs> in course. the whole world. <laughs> but uh, we couldn't afford Dedham. Mm -hmm. So we came out uh, this way, and uh, back then we paid eighteen nine ninety for our house. Oh my goodness! Wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That yes, is it is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> in Georgia. Oh, my father brought us out here. He lost his position at the Watertown Arsenal closed, so he brought us out here in nineteen thirty, <laughs> <laughs> and we he was hired to wash rugs at Thompson's, which became Packard's. Mm. on Union Street, and so we had the little cottage across the street to live in, and, and he washed the Oriental rugs. And then we moved up to uh, Orms's on King Street, and my mother took care of Mrs. Orms, and then Mr. Orms had eight children, so she helped to take care of them. Oh my. Um, That's and she of said, I'm not living on a dirt floor. Yeah. They were living on a dirt floor with the places where the beds and everything else went. So she's, and, but his shop on the other end of the building had a nice concrete floor on it in his shop. So she says, you're putting this floor in and so <laughs> <laughs> So they got a floor. So on Union Street, you said? No, it was King, King Street. Street. On King Street. On King Street, and your, but your first home was there on were Union. three houses on King Street when we came out. Is three still? houses on the whole. Is your of home? Street. Is the home still there? Is the home still there? No, no. That where, is amazing. T tell them where the home was. Uh, the home was where I. Uh, my home, my two-family home, was burned. That's where the original home was that we went to with the Ormses, and that burned down in '71. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So that has. New, host, new homes lying there, and then we had purchased the land across the street, and so we have built new homes across the street on that land. So that's 27 King Street now is still my home. And I would imagine it was very, uh, it's probably cheaper than your 18000 that you were paying for your, for your home, correct? <laughs> Do you have any memories of, of your early years in Norfolk? You shared some of them already, but I, you know anything that you can remember that stands out from your early Well, time? of course, we had four children in, in the schools, and there were so many organizations that the children belonged to and we belonged to. I was a Girl Scout leader. Um, I helped coach a, a softball team, and we were the Green Dolphins, and a few years back, I would happen to be at the field, and the girls were playing softball, and I went over and asked them how the Green Dolphins were doing, and they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> so apparently the Green Dolphins have, um, no. are no longer. And we made our own uniforms. We had um, nylon uh, green shirts with an orange dolphin. And, um, you know, all my girls, you know, were on that team. And uh, then we went on to, my son went on, and we went on to Papa Warner. Mm -hmm. And my husband was the... Uh, one of the first coaches with Richard Starkman, and um, my son played on Richard's team, and two of the girls were cheerleaders, and one of the girls now is a grandmother, and, her, and I'm a great-grandmother, and her oh son plays now on the Norfolk um, Vikings team. So and he, he goes to school here, and uh, that, so, you know, it's kind of gone around, and I have the yearbooks, and we look <laughs> through them, you know, and it's kind of, um, it's kind of fun. Oh, it you know, be. watching the in the different ones grow up, and some of the children I see now on the uh, you know around. Uh, Hello, Mrs. Schroen. How are you? You know, that's great. and it's that really um, yes. And we taught Sunday school at St. Jude's, both my husband and I. 
And um, it was it was back then you knew everybody in town yes. just about. You went to church, you knew everybody. Right. And um, now it's it's so different. There's so many um, you know new people in town. I really don't know that many. And I think it was a lot of it was because when your children go to school, you're involved, and that's how you mm -hmm. meet the people. And now that my they're all grown. They all live locally, which I'm very fortunate. Yeah. The girls all live in Rentham. My son's in um, Mansfield. And my grandkids are now local, too. I know how fortunate I am. Wow. So that's have everybody right real here. close. That is very, very fortunate. So and I have four great-grandchildren. Oh, my wow. goodness. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I'm getting old. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You not at all. You had oh, I was a child. <laughs> Of course you were. <laughs> and Georgia, how about you? Can you remember uh, anything special? Like you, it could be like about the town or going to school, uh, uh, like so that people well, see the difference. Uh, my mother had uh, Marigold's Goat Farm on King Street for 30 years. She conducted that goat farm and raised pedigree goats oh, and wow. pedigree dogs. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so what kind of that's dogs? That's the way I grew up. Cocker spaniels. Oh, how much fun! So they were all named for plant flowers because she. She changed her name, left out one of the O's in Gould, so it became Mary Gould, Mary Gold, instead of Mary Gould. So it was Mary Gold Goat Farm. So that was brought us into the town where we met other people that needed the goat's milk when they had ulcers. And how did you sell? And you would bring it like to them, and they then would they would buy it, or the they milk would come to your farm. They knew about the farm, or they would buy a goat if they wanted a, a nice a good goat or if they wanted just a goat for milk or whatever. So How interesting. Well, they yeah. still have goats in Norfolk because the boomerang yes. said that there's still plenty of people that have goats <laughs> I know, I know. in Norfolk. I know. Maybe yeah. they're Two descendants of yours. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> My daughter who lives in Rentham had a, has had a goat at one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So goats must yeah. be very popular. <laughs> so did you have responsibilities? Did you oh, have yes. to feed all the, the, farmers, the... All the farm responsibilities. Oh yes, you took you cleaned out the little beans. They have little beans, you know. And so you cleaned up the beans and took them out to the pile and put them on the manure pile out there. You wheeled them out in a wheelbarrow. Oh my you lugged the water because we had just a cistern at that time, which was wonderful. But we had to come down to the town pump and get water when the cistern, wow. when oh we didn't goodness. have rain from the roof to fill the cistern, <laughs> we had to come down and get the water from the town pump. Now where was that? Where was we were sad when they took away the town pump, right in the center, right where that opening was that you used to go up the stairs. You mean on Town Hill? On Town yeah. Hill, yeah. so right where the sign is, where it says the curvature yeah. right there? Oh. The old curve in front of the... There used to be stairs to walk down. In front down of the church the Oh, town. okay, yes. The old stairs. Mm -hmm. The pump was right there. We used to go down and get, for the goats, of course, you had to have the water for the goats. Yes. How interesting. Now, did you have to walk to school? That's Some of the I other ladies had to walk to the end of the street. To the end of the street. And it was very difficult, and my mother persuaded them to get some tar up to the, or at least where her house was, which is like, near the 27 King Street where my home is now. So, <laughs> so she did, she got the tower up there. My mother was quite uh, in influential in getting things done Good. in off park. Now, so what was her name? Mary Gould. Mary Gould. G-O-O-L-D. Okay. So fun. Okay, so she and so you walked and then the bus would pick you up? I'd have to walk from the house down to the a, end of King. a mile and a quarter down to the end of the street. And then when she convinced the bus they should come up, we were picked up by the bus. Well, of course, more people had come in by that time. Sure. So it made it. And where did you go to school then? You went to the school that was right in town? I went to the school that used to be right where the ch church plant is, where yes. the church Education. Sunday school plant is. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the central school that I went to. That's where the central school and was. And I shopped at Manstoa, which yes. was across from the church. Which we've heard about. We've heard about Manstoa, and you could go at lunch and walk over. and picked out our penny candy. <laughs> 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 I didn't get a bicycle till the eighth grade. So then I could finally ride downtown and get do whatever I wanted to on my bicycle. So tell me, which... You had to go to Walpole for high school. For high school. Right. Which corner was Manstoa on? Right across from the Federated Church. 
but where dailies dailies is or over where no. the bank is where the bank is oh with the right bank where the is it was a beautiful home up on the hill there there was, it a, was hill? a beautiful maid delaney lived there there was a hill so they took the St. Jude's had their rectory there for yes. a long time. Yeah. Right on their same location then? The, the rectory yes, was yes. in oh the man's store. Oh, and okay. He had, it was down below and he had a stairway that went up inside to the house up above. The house was positively beautiful because... Oh, absolutely um, beautiful. It had been maintained first, by everybody. Mm, we first moved to town, um, we ran a help run whist parties for St. Jude's. And of course, we'd have to go meet with the, the priest at that time, mm -hmm. and he took us on a tour. That it was positively gorgeous. And was the train uh, still there then? Right the there. Tracks? The depot, you mean? Yeah. yeah the depot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so the those depot. the train uh, has always been where it is now. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there was yeah, a depot. The house kind there of was train. a depot in City Mills as well. Do you know that? Oh, oh no. no! The train went through City Mills, yeah, and then there was the a stop there. there. There was a post office there oh. in City Mills, yeah. There was a post office in the Plumville section of town too where I live. Right. Hmm. And the house is still standing. The property is for sale now. Uh, um, guess they want a million dollars for it, but it's the land that's worth so much. Yeah. But the house, I've met the woman who lived there, and it's right on Valley Street. And if you step, you can almost see it, you know, being a dirt road and, and the horse um, drawn wagons going by. And she said in that house, there's still the cages from, from the post office oh, because her, oh my her grandmother was the postmistress. Oh, how and, um, yeah, it Francis, is very interesting. Dad. Francis and Horace Hamlin lived right behind the tracks from the post office. So he used to work there and don't volunteer time there. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't know that. We didn't know that there was a, that, is that in, uh, have there been pictures taken of that? The house is for sale now. It's, sti it's, it's still up. Uh, and there was a the Baptist uh, camp down there also. And the, the church used to bring uh, children out from the city. And when we first moved there, I can remember them in little tents, you know, and they're, they're camping and having a good time. And then um, I don't know what happened that the church decided not to use it anymore. And they wanted to sell it to the town. And, but the town didn't buy it because, you know, it's the other side of the town. It wasn't near the center. But recreation go to had a great big oh, building. It was yeah. a great big building there with an in-ground pool. Oh, oh my goodness! And all of a sudden, the building caught fire, and of course, then the church came out and they they le had to level the building because sure. it was a hazard, and they filled in the pool. Oh, that's too bad. And so now that land is for sale now. Oh. In the little uh, stone chapel mm -hmm. is a residential a er, uh, oh, residential cool. home now, yeah. in back of that land. Oh, nice! It's right across from. Not quite four kicks, but right. right across from the fence company. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that okay. So right that's, that's where the Baptists I had there. It's a big, I can remember, big white building. Oh, my Beautiful. goodness. Beautiful. So when you say the Baptist, are you talking about Emmanuel Baptist or no. a different? No, no, no because Baptist. Emmanuel Baptist Church is a shoot off from our Federated Church. Okay. Hmm. You know, and, and everybody, the, was, everybody came to the Federated Church before the chapel was built in Manston. Okay. And, and that actually, the, 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 um, some of the girls played softball in the field down there yep. uh, that they had. Mm -hmm. Wow. But interesting. I'll have to go and check it out. Now, we haven't heard that story. No, so no, that's, that's no. And I don't know if the picture of the, ch of the uh, camp is in, um, the, way back when there was a, a, a book put out. It was a soft, it yes. was a hard cover mm -hmm. yes. of all the old buildings yes. in town. Right. And that building might be in it. I'm not sure. I have I have that book at home. Yeah, but I don't know. I do too. Um, okay, now, was there something also behind Man's store? Yeah. At one point, wasn't there like? Well, just the beautiful home upon the just hill the behind Man's store. Mm -hmm. Now, when you I say the hill, so there was a hill. It was. It was. Yeah. It, yes, we had to walk up to the uh, rectory. So that whole thing was leveled so that they could build all those mm -hmm. offices. Well, there was even oh. some kind of a gazebo or some sort up there too, wasn't there? No, the gazebo was on Town Hill. But there was something up there also beside the, um, might have been a place to sit beside well, they the house. had a garage and everything beside the house and on the other side. One of the things that many of the women have said is that growing up here, that they felt extremely safe. 
Oh, they yes. never oh, yes. had to worry. Never. Uh, they my could just walk out. People, and they my mother would have people stop. That's King Street. No, I mean, then it was <laughs> just you know, dirt. That's way off the other edge. It's the same as the edge of the first side. King Street. And uh, they would stop and ask if they could do work for a meal. And that's what they would do. They would do work for a meal. And then we had the Mormons, the Latter-day Saints, they'd come along and they'd stop and my mother would feed them too, everybody. <laughs> oh, nice. And they never really had to worry, your mom never had to worry never about the children and where you were you or... You never walked the door. Never. Your neighborhood, your community, neighborhood, everybody knew everybody else. They took care of everybody else's children. Mm -hmm. Oh my. It's the same in 64 when we moved in. Yeah. Isn't that nice? And so when you, if you would walk into the town, then you could walk around the town feeling comfortable too. Oh, yes. It wasn't oh, yes. uh, anything to worry about. Yeah. I think the big thing was in 1970 when they had their centennial, we were here at a good time. Mm -hmm. and that uh, we joined in, in all the facilities, in, 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 in the activities. And, and my husband and, and he belonged to the Wampanoag Indians, and I was a cameo. Mm -hmm. and, my girls, <laughs> and my girls were little cameos. I can remember making their little skirts for them. And it was a great time to get to know all the folks in town. Yes. I think the town is too big to do anything like that mm -hmm. now. Yeah. My but, son was my oldest son, George, George Bryant was in the Brothers of the Brush, so he had grown the beard, and he got arrested for having the beard when it was supposed to be taken off, so <laughs> put in jail and all the things that they did. It so was a fun time. And then it you really had to was. go out and pay money to get him out of jail, and yes, that's so yes, the fundraiser type thing. Oh, you had to thing. do you something. You had to raise the funds mm -hmm. yes, to support mm -hmm. you so that you could be released. I had to, I had to make a key, and um, I would had to be a, a quite a, quite a number of feet long key because the brothers were doing something and I took my husband's keys and hood, hid them in the sugar bowl and he couldn't find them. <laughs> and, and so I was in big trouble. <laughs> so the brothers find me and I had to make this big key. <laughs> and I did it in um, Barbara Enos, she doesn't live in the town anymore, in her garage because she, had the, she yeah. had the biggest garage. Yeah. We paper mache this big key. Oh, wow. oh my yeah. goodness! Oh, wow. So it was a real fun time. It, it yeah. really Sounds was fun positive. Yeah. And the children were old enough so that they could participate. You know, we didn't have to worry about having babysitters. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. uh, now, how long did the your activities go for the centennial? What was the year? Oh my God! So oh the beginning of oh, wow. oh, the race. Oh, so it wasn't just hill. a weekend. It was oh, like no. a whole year. Whole year. It would let up to it. Oh, yes. Some oh, people went out fun. and raided every night. Raided? Raided. <laughs> we raided like the, the Wampanoag Indians had hatchets. And my kids would make the hatchets out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. And if you were raided, you'd, uh, you'd find a hatchet on your lawn the next morning or, or, or something. I, I can remember the Indians, every time they went out and raided, would raise one of those cardboard um, hatchets, the flagpole at the center of town. Oh, and, you know, that was bad. But <laughs> <laughs> now, was did the school get involved in that also, the elementary school? I don't know how involved they were, you know. Um, Maybe so they were involved yeah, in the parade, because they weren't, it was they a parade. Were, Maybe it was they a big were parade. involved in the parade. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and you, you dressed up. I The cameos were long yes. black skirts and white blouses and um, a bow, white bow in their hair, and I still have the pin, the the bells pin that, that everyone got, and um, I I wore my grandmother's cameo. I, I don't know why I never lost oh, it, I, I did, and um, our, our when we raided, we had a, a cameo it was on cardboard with lace around it that we left it different people's houses. And the chief of police was the worst one of all. <laughs> it was Johnson, Johnson back then. And his house was Jimmy. right on the right on the road. And he used to have these two lights on either side of his driver so he knew if you were raiding his house, you'd run up and leave the hatchet on the doorbell or the cameo, you know, you know. And he had these so if he knew if someone was passing these lights and he would come out, you know, and <laughs> and so what what they used, we used to do, we used to take a brown paper bag and insert it over the lights <laughs> so that they wouldn't know who was right. But, um, but oh anyway. Oh <laughs> now, was there somebody that was like the, the chairperson of all of this activity? Each, each, um, each section, section each had their yeah. own. Uh, and uh, ours was, um, I know 
I don't remember who, who the head of, our, of the cameos were. Um, we had someone. I know Pat Michaels was very involved. Mm -hmm. And Jean Daly was the head of the Bells. I can oh, remember okay. her being. At that time. At yes. that time, mm -hmm. the head of the Bells. Mm -hmm. And you had different, right, was that what we saw in the film, some of the activities, like the, um, some, um, you threw <laughs> the rolling pins? and see who could throw the rolling pin the furthest. Yeah. I thought yeah. that looked like so much fun in the grease bowl and a lot of different to activities. To keep it in line. <laughs> <laughs> but then the children with the, um, their bikes decorated and their yeah. baby oh, carriages. Yeah, baby oh, carriages. Yeah. It was so yeah. cute. It was, it was so cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did the Federated Church get involved in the Well, this was the Centennial. The Federated was Church has had a 200 year anniversary and we did the same thing. <gasps> For the whole year, they had activities, and then they had the same the bike parades and everything. Mm. Now, when was that, Georgia? What Frank year was, was very helpful with our two-year, two-hundred-year anniversary. Now, what, what, when, what year was that? Do you remember? Seventy-five. It was seventeen sixty-five. So it was a. 1965. Nineteen sixty-five. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that How was before the town then. If I'm wrong, you can cool. correct me. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> I think that sounds yeah. wonderful. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the, the Grange, as far as I know both of you are active in the Grange, but I, I would like to know a little bit about the history yes, of the Grange. Yes, my mother was familiar with the Grange when we came here. So we did join, and back at that time, they had a wonderful lecture. Uh, the Grange is comprised of degrees, but the degrees represent the different stations. The four degrees make you a subordinate member, which is your own community. The fifth degree is the county range, so it includes mm -hmm. all of the counties. And then the sixth degree is the state range, includes all of the states. And then the seventh degree, of course, is national degree. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's a definite family organization. The children can belong to the youth range and the junior range, and at 14 they can join the Grange, and it's definitely totally family-oriented organization. And uh, so I was told that much, so I can at least give you a picture of our membership application. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, is the 4-H in any way attached they to the Grange? Really, they started the the Farmers of America, uh, the Grange started the mm -hmm. Farmers of America, through the Napa County Agricultural School, got involved through the Grange. So all of these started locally in the small towns to help the farmers and to support the people in the small towns and uh, give them more support. So from that it just branched out and as I said, uh, they started the rural free delivery mm -hmm. of the mail service. So that initiated the mail service in our oh, country. that was nice. All those years ago. Oh. So it was basically a farmer's organization. Yes. That's how community. it started. Farmers and communities. Yes. And today, is it still as active as it was? Yes, it is still as active. Oh, I started to tell you, back then we had a wonderful lecturer, and she brought in 25 couples into the Grange. So we had 45 people, and we used to have the uh, the competitions of the men against the women. We'd have that competition, and whoever lost would have to get the dinner for the whole spring. <laughs> so we, it was very active. Now, how that often did the men have to horse. make dinner? How often did the men have to do that? <laughs> Probably all the time. <laughs> Fairly often, because Thelma Ravinsky was involved then, too, and you know what Thelma's capable of. <laughs> Also at the Grange too. There is yes, a sign in the, in the Grange in the, the kitchen area. Yeah. In the kitchen part of Oh, there the is. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the plaque is still there. And oh, that's okay. the things that you can get from Sue Bruno. Okay. She has all of that material. In now, fact, it's on the web. What are they doing now as far as renovating? What are, are you renovating the whole inside? Yeah, they have been, you can cut out what you mm -hmm. want to cut out, but we have started with six different entities because you had to have our own grange, you had to have the state grange involved, you had to have our own town and then you had to have the state involved. Then you had to have the historical for our own town and then you had to have this historical for the state. Oh my goodness. So you had to have these six 
So that's part of what's holding it up. What I really should put on the hawk net so that they'll stop uh, bantering. But and so we're constantly going back to Bob Bullock and back to these other things to have approvals and approvals and approvals. So you all have to approve on whatever. Everybody what? has to approve and oh reapprove and. Oh my. That's what's holding it up. It has taken. Mm -hmm. You know what I think is so wonderful, though, and I think this is part of the reason that this community is so special, is that the Senior Center stepped right in, and you're still meeting, and you're still carrying mm -hmm. on, and when the new building is finished, you know, you'll still be intact. Yes. Whereas a lot of times, other places, when something like this happens, you know, people don't have a place to meet or to go, and yes. everything mm -hmm. just kind of falls apart. And of course, apart. the pancake breakfast was such a community event. We mm -hmm. got to know a lot of people and meet a lot of people. And so, they're, when are you going to have the pancake breakfast again? I said, Well, maybe soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Grange was always so good to us. I mean, whenever we, before we had our senior yes. center. They, we, they used to let us meet in the hall. They never charged us. And we there was a period of time when it was approached to have the, the senior Council on Aging in the, in the Grange Hall. Mm -hmm. We've had, we had committees and everything, mm -hmm. the Simpsons and everyone, and myself and, and Richard and everybody. No, Richard wasn't involved then. And um, had hoped to use the Grange Hall, but it wouldn't work out as mm -hmm. in time value, you know. Now how often do you meet then? Do you have meetings like once a month or? And now it's once a month because of the situation. Mm -hmm. We hate, well, and the uh, Pomona Grange, which is the fifth degree, which is the county, we've been meeting here too and we are so grateful mm -hmm. to Nana. Well, and so, part of the fifth, so fifth thrilled fifth that she's a Granger. <laughs> Now this, your building, you, you mentioned before we start interviewing, is the only one within a certain area? Yes, yes. We had, uh, Plainville lost their building a long, long time ago. Dedham lost their building. Uh, Walpole lost their building, meeting place. Franklin lost it quite a while mm -hmm. ago, too. Um, so and they come from Canton, They've, and Foxborough has lost their meeting hall, too. All of these Grangers all meet with us. So it really is a historical those that building. Are those that are close enough belong to our subordinate Grange, mm -hmm. and the others meet because of the county mm -hmm. for the Pomona Grange. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. So Norm, can you tell us the history of the Senior it's Center? Senior <laughs> it's not going to go back as far, but I know it has I a know. lot of good well, information. I Everyone thinks it's a beautiful building. Oh, um, it is. The town gave us the building and everything you see in it. The friends, our friends group, which um, is a great group, they they furnished everything, all the furniture, mm -hmm. and, and, and and everything. And um, that's the biggest thing both Nama and I have to say, the volunteers that oh have supported yes. and helped us. The Over volunteers, the years. for years and years and years, we so greatly appreciate all the volunteers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we ha we do have some books of history books here, and it's kind of fun. I leave them out. It's kind of fun to look through and see that the seniors who um, work so hard uh, to get to get this building, um, you know. And um, we have to thank our friends group because they just finished the building. They finished the uh, outside the back backyard this year, and um, and, and um, we been here since 2001, so we've been here longer. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the uh, upper level was finished first, and then we received a grant, grant to finish the uh, lower level. And of course, all times we ran out of money, like you always mm -hmm. do. And our friends group came forward and helped us um, immensely with everything that um, is here. And other people, too. Um, um, we have a, a tree of friends that's on the front wall when you come in and you can see all the people that have helped. Um, the Didham Institute for Saving. And that the funds too, as well, oh, to the nice. friends. Southwood Hospital gave us so many things also when they moved uh, in a health screening room. We have uh, a scale, and we have chairs. Um, this bookcase in back of us came from uh, Southwood Hospital. We had the Hospital. refrigerator, the freezer. We just had to replace the refrigerator. The freezer is still going. Oh. Um, they gave us uh, their th 
base sinks that they had there and their um, stoves, but we couldn't use them um, because it was electric and we have propane here and now you don't have a two base sink, you have a three base sink. So um, there was a, there's a great place in Franklin by the Franklin Mill store called um, CBS and they took everything in trade and they gave us a little bit of money for so many things that we could from her and we put it towards buying the stove, the confection oven, the dishwasher. Oh, nice. So a lot, you know, we, um, you know, so put us, all the dishes you see here. And when we have oh our dinner club, we, it's white, well, white Melmac, you know, and after a while the hospital uh, started using paper things. Mm -hmm. So these dishes were still in the original boxes. We got glasses, oh cups and saucers, soup bowl, I mean, we have so, so many, and we use it all the time because it's so much nicer oh, using a real plate and real silverware than it is to use plastic oh, and paper, and it, it makes a nice, nice um, table setting when yeah. we think so. So we try to make the senior center uh, like your second home, mm -hmm. comfortable, and um, you know, and the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts have helped us a lot. They come, and they've planted bulbs, or they'll do a little program for us um, on. November 11th, uh, we've since the town um, it doesn't have the parade mm -hmm. anymore for the veterans. We've picked up and have a breakfast here every November 11th for the seniors. Oh, and the Boy Scouts good. come in and they'll do a flag ceremony mm -hmm. and they help serve. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's you know and uh, you know we encourage the different groups to, to come. We're having. Um, week of Christmas uh, for the past three years we had a little dance group that comes in and puts on a little kind of recital kind of type thing for the seniors and uh, you know we encourage the youth mm -hmm. to come and, and uh, you know do you know help us and work in the yard and do you know. And that's nice for them too. It is. Because may and maybe do you know have grandparents close by mm -hmm. and it's just nice to have that interchanging between the two, talking and sharing ideas and stories. And and enjoy. some of the schools, I know uh, Severian High School, when they're a senior, their last uh, semester they come and work in the community and we've had a lot of young people from the town of uh, Norfolk that have come in and, and worked their last few months of school here at the senior center, so it's, it's been fun. Well, it's a beautiful facility and every time I have stopped or gone by, it always seems like it's busy. So I know mm -hmm. that the And people from used. other towns, that, like we had an outreach meeting here yesterday, and um, they just, their, their centers might be bigger, but it's just the architect and it's mm -hmm. open and it seems there's a lot of windows and it's, and it's airy and, and uh, mm -hmm. they just, um, everyone comments how beautiful it is. It's very and cool. we think so. Yeah. That's how it we, we yeah. want it. Yeah. <laughs> Georgia, could you um, just reflect a little bit about what it was like socially growing up in Norfolk when you were young? Did a lot of your uh, social activities revolve around the church or? Community, really. We had a, a marvelous woman named Pamela Fay back then, and she would love to teach people music. And uh, she brought community activities together. We had a community chorus. And everybody in town, and as I said, most everybody ended up at the Federated Church. There wasn't a Catholic Church at that time. And um, so those things would bring the community together all the time. It was more, very much, community mm -hmm. because of that. Did you have dances? <laughs> a lot of us went to the old-timers dances, they were called. And... Uh, they were fabulous too, and as you just said, there was no fear. Uh -huh. There was never any drinking. It was always a wonderful, wonderful time. The only thing you would get punished for would be, it was always very crowded, and you would be punished if you were trying to jitterbug because you'd be hitting people. <laughs> so they had one gal that used to like to jitterbug anyway, that and was somebody a, would help her do Georgia, that. was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because I was only 11 years old oh. when my parents started taking me, and there was a woman that was horrified. How can you take that child to a dance like that? Well, they couldn't afford a babysitter and the dance, too, so they took Georgia. So there were nice older men oh. there that loved to help teach me how to dance, and the love. it was a beautiful oh, way to I grow bet. up. Beautiful. I bet. 
So and where you was still it? love dancing. I was just going to say yeah. that you still love yeah. dancing because you were yeah. going to those ballroom oh. dances. Yeah. Are you still doing that? Yeah, Lake Pearl, Louisiana. At Lake Pearl. Yeah. Oh my goodness. By the sociables. Yeah. yeah. So where was the dance held? The old timers dance. Um, the first ones were up in Rentham. Oh, okay. And where the you know, <laughs> where there used to be a town hall, okay. across oh. from the church, oh. up in the town hall, um, that was Jim Slavin back then. And then he went to Walpole, and it was in Blackburn Memorial Hall in Walpole. And as I say, that that's where the jitterbug lady was put out of the dance, <laughs> 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 hitting people with their jitterbugging. So, hmm. so much fun. Yes, it was a good life. I think it's what's so wonderful is we, we sense a real community, you know, when you yes. when we yeah. listen to these yes. stories uh, of how everybody was so close. Yes, and, and the churches and did everything and the together. Churches and, the churches and, and, and the towns, did and you together. did everything yeah. together, and I think that is so yeah. nice. You really get to know your neighbors that you way. Do. You yes. do. I've met some really, really wonderful people. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is what, this is so nice, mm -hmm. because it, it, it is a community. Oh, yes. And Very of course, we're grateful so. to the taxpayers that have helped us to build this. Build this so yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone is welcome. George yeah. has been our chairperson for a good many years. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was chair of the COA for a good many years. Mm -hmm. Apple mm -hmm. Smith got me into the Friends way back. <laughs> <laughs> they knew a good member when they saw one. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, for sure. I think Chris Shaw has been in the more than I have yeah. over 20 years. One of the questions we, we sometimes ask, and we never know how the answer is going to be, but is, as, do you like the way the town is looking as far as how it's progressing with the Walgreens well, and... Well, I don't know. Um, I, fe I felt bad when the gazebo went. I really did. Yes, we tried to preserve the gazebo. Um, we tried to save it, but it got a little bit destroyed over at the town. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember my daughter, she at one time worked at, at the Federated Church with the children, and she was on her way home as they were taking it down off the hill, and she said, there was a tear in my eye, you know, it was just, I think, you know, progress, you have to go uh -huh. along with progress, too. Uh -huh. So I, I sometimes don't like change, um, but I That's think progress, like that. um, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah, I have pictures um, of my, my children when they were baptized. We came from the Federated Church over to the gazebo and we're standing in front of the gazebo. The old gazebo. The old yeah. gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> we actually wanted to put it here at the senior center we thought mm -hmm. it would be, oh, but it, it just was too far gone, yeah. you know, to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we say Charles and I saved pieces of it to be duplicated, but... I thought maybe they could make some money by sell, <laughs> selling the rocks. <laughs> selling, you know, the, the, it was on a, a Fieldstone Foundation, oh, uh -huh. you know, by selling people oh, with yeah. a lot, yeah. a gazebo rock. Yeah. But um, that, uh, I don't even know what happened to the uh, foundation, whether it's still up at the uh, at the down. Well, the hill came down anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Grange has a lot of little um, th things that they found yes. that when they were mm. removing yes, the had a girl that was an pipes. archaeologist in the Grange oh. for quite a long time. Oh, how interesting. interesting. So they've been, they've been stored away. So rack. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. stored away. Stored away, so that'll be back out and it was kind of nails and different things probably yeah. came from the old town, original town. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. oh, nice. yeah. Have you ever had a, a dig like around the Grange at all? You know, into the, anybody said that they'd like to do it? No, to but they will might be, be because they'll there? be doing a septic system, so. <laughs> so maybe they'll yeah. have some more things to add to your collection <laughs> if they find them. Yeah. That would be very interesting. Well, we thank you. Of course, H. Olive Day was such an active member in our grain. She was master for so many years, and her parents before mm -hmm. her. And she traveled. There's one thing about the Grange. I mean, they're, they're just the best people. I yes, mean, they do. Grangers, I mean, you can trust them. And uh, of course, they're going to Washington for the legislation. Our legislative representatives are going to Washington oh, to represent the better. And, uh, and we meet. That we just had the meeting in uh, Milford, it happened to be, for the state range, and that's one when they brought up to date, and they make all the votes of what they think should be a very good bill to be passed, so.
we go and legis they go and legislate in Washington. Yeah, and H at one time, I don't know if it is now because so many granges have closed, but you could go to a grange every every evening every if you wanted to. And H all day place. when oh. I first came into the grange, she'd call me and say, would you like to go here? <laughs> she'd try to pull me with her, you know, and it was fun going to other grange. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, means, but I don't know if there are that many going on anymore that you can go every night. No, but not every night no. anymore. That's very, very nice that we have such a, a special organization in our town oh, and yeah. a building, historical building mm -hmm. like that. And it it's having beautiful it, and having, inside. It, having it preserved. Yeah. 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 It's a wonderful and thing to as have. You said, well, as you asked me, I should continue that. It has now evolved into community and uh, education more than the farms are still supported by the range of course but we do the words for thirds and third graders get the dictionaries from the grain oh, and nice. um, of course we used to have the citizen of the year award every year and we had the uh, essay contest too the presidential essay contest with the schools every year so. It'll get back again. Yeah, it'll, it'll get back. It'll get back. The building yeah. is Thank you. up and running again. Yeah. Scholarships. Do you I don't know. Yes. Yeah, we just gave a scholarship. Yeah. <coughs> In fact, the person that uh, won the scholarship was a, a member of the uh, Norfolk Aggie School. Was going to school at the Norfolk Agricultural School. So we just granted a scholarship to him. That's why. And he lives in Norfolk. Oh, oh well, that's special. good. That's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. That's very Jane nice. and Paul's son. Oh. I was just going to ask if it was either Jane or Paul's or, or one of the uh, Walsh's or, you know. That's oh, wonderful. Oh, great. Yeah. Very nice. Now, did you, I just, I was curious, did you help your mom take care of the goats and... Yes, Georgia milked the goats. <laughs> Georgia took the hay out. Were you a child? child or, or yes. Oh, you were. I, oh. have a, I used to have a half sister. I have a half oh. sister. But she was down on the cake. Oh, okay. Yes, we had to milk the goats twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> so you had a lot of responsibility then. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And then they'd hire someone to come in and help clean up and move the hay or whatever. You know, things that were beyond mm -hmm. what I could do. Mm -hmm. He would get paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Okay. That's always the case. <laughs> yeah. At that time, I didn't realize, you know, you're eating and you're heat, you're heated in your home and you have a bed to sleep in. He gets paid. That's not fair. <laughs> now, how many goats do you think that she you had? She had forty at one time. Ooh, wow. A real, a real. Wow. So that yes, was yeah. a real dairy. Yeah. Oh yes, a real yeah. dairy. And of course, you had the buck that was so famous <laughs> <laughs> for breeding purposes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Being pedigreed. Yeah. Did they ever <laughs> escape? It didn't smell very good. <laughs> <laughs> Did any of them ever escape? Not Do you remember? Too easily. Anything? But we didn't have a garden. If those that would escape, we put on a chain and they went on the chain on the, on the uh, stake in the ground mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they wouldn't get out again. But well, we had to put one of those anyway because she had horns. My mother always debutted everything that she had. But that one had horns, so she had to be out where she couldn't affect the others. With now, do you know why your mother became interested in raising goats? Because her father imported goat's milk from Switzerland when she was born. Oh, oh, That's how she survived. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. She was allergic to the milk when she was born. He imported it from Switzerland. Wow. My grandfather. So she could drink My the grandfather Briggs. <laughs> she could drink the goat's milk then. Oh she, yes, it, she it, wasn't it was delightful. There was no different odor. It had Did it have that cream at the top like I remember? No, honey. No. Goat's milk is already pasteurized. Oh is it? In the goat. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know That's that why India has goats. Oh. Because it's pure, it's the purest milk you could possibly get. Does it taste just in, like in cow milk? All of that we did, all we did was go through a cheesecloth and we had a 300 bacteria and cow's milk never attains 
down to 300 bacteria. Never, never, never. Could you tell, can you tell the difference when you're drinking the goat's milk compared to? No, ours was very good. We had a very clean dairy. Mm -hmm. We had a very clean barn. How interesting. No, it was the same uh, flavor. Wow. I never knew anything different. Hmm. So much? now when your mother was allergic to when she was a little girl, that was in the 1800s, I would say. Yes, my mother was uh, born in 1992. So in 1892, he wow. imported that from wow. Switzerland. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and did they live in Norfolk at the time, or was that? Oh, no, no you said it. They when were in you Watertown. Were okay, you said yeah. you moved here when you were two. That's right. Yes. Was. Yeah, my mother. My mo I'm a product of the Grange. <laughs> My mother and father met at a Grange dance. <laughs> okay. Oh. It's in your now, blood. It is in your blood. No wonder you are such an active member. <laughs> yeah. At the yeah. Grange. Down on the Cape. Oh, yeah. I was just going to ask where that one was. Oh. Yeah. Fascinating. How much yeah. fun. That's great. That's great. Well, we thank you very much. These are wonderful stories, and that's what we wanted to oh, get so recorded. I you. It was um, <laughs> when we started thinking about uh, Women's History Month. You know, there's so many stories about Norfolk that would get yes. lost about the women and, and how active and what they did in the community. And we definitely wanted to get that down and have it recorded. So and we Bonnie thank you. Has given me a little preview of talking to Pauline Candela Valente, which is way before my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be a good one. We've had some very yeah. good stories, and yeah. some of them have been uh, very similar, which is kind of fun, yeah. but we did, we've had some wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, can I just ask one sure. question? So, Norma, can you just tell us um, when the, con the idea of building St. Jude's where it is now, when did that kind of all come together? I really... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, oh, okay. I mean, um, I know that the uh, the rectory was the old house that was down, mm -hmm. and they had a little chapel mm -hmm. where that store was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we, you need you need Thelma on that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah, because we don't have any idea mm -hmm. on yeah. on what we know so much about well, how I the federated the church. church right. But, okay. And mm -hmm. I came. My mother went to the church, Congregational Church in Wrentham. She was a paid soloist there for years. And then when I had my children, I felt I should come to the Norfolk Church, where my children would go to mm -hmm. school with the Norfolk children. Mm -hmm. So I came to the Federated Church then. That's 50 ideas ago. And the rest is history. history. <laughs>